Hello and welcome back to the Cesspool Podcast, where we talk about everything and anything, no matter how disgusting or offensive. This is our sixth episode, and we'll still be introducing ourselves. I'm your co-host, Tyler, with my other co-host, Joseph. Uh, sorry about the no upload last week. We had to shoot part of our horror short that week. Um, yeah, but uh, so that's why we weren't we were busy. We couldn't make any uploads. So yeah, we're sorry. Yes. Um, but back to the to the podcast. Our first section, uh, as always, is current events. Uh, our first article is on Congressman Consumer Reports raise concerns about Tesla autopilot. Pretty much, uh, these Democratic senators have voiced their concerns uh, about the fact that these uh, patterns of fatal accidents are correlated with these Tesla uh, autopilot uh, system. So now uh, the government is telling the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration to look into it. So uh, the Consumer Reports, this company, tested the different Tesla models autopilots and they found out that apparently the vehicles which use steering wheels uh, inputs to at, uh, assess the driver's attention didn't send any warnings about an empty driver's seat. A consumer report said uh, they also uh, attached, there's an attached weight to the Model Y steering wheel to stimulate a hand during the testing. Um, like that that's that's how much it, uh the model y needed like i, I don't know it, it just explains that the consumer report is saying that they were surprised that the city, uh, system didn't have a way to explicitly keep the driver ready to take over the wheel and tesla so far hasn't responded to these comments so the question here is uh was tesla's autopilot uh system sent out too prematurely should it should it have been tested? Should it have been revised before it uh, was you know mass produced? Yeah, it it one hundred percent. I mean, I I'm personally I uh, I like to think you know I I like to embrace like newer technology in a lot of cases, but um, in my opinion, self driving cars are not one of them. At least not yet. Uh, we're nowhere near ready. And I know Tesla Autopilot is not explicitly self-driving car but it the basic concept is there and Mm -hmm. it's really not in my opinion the only way a self-driving car system would work is if every car was self-driving and they all knew where they were at every moment so i mean not only that there's also pedestrians right yeah then they have to take into that account Mm -hmm. and i and like i know that modern cars have like a lot of safety features and sensors and crap that are supposedly able to sense, you know, pedestrian or the vehicle or whatever, but it's just, it's not ready yet. And and the fact, and like you mentioned, like the fact that, um, the Tesla basically couldn't tell whether, you know, it was just a weight on the steering wheel or a human being in the vehicle isn't, is a huge issue because that, that basically leads to the point where someone could, basically have like a tesla autopilot system operating without anybody in the car and that's yeah that's a very scary thing to think about that it, it is totally possible and of course um, yeah there should be uh yeah i mean again it, it's hard to say because you know uh hindsight is always twenty twenty. yep it's, it's hard to it's hard for tesla to be fully blamed for this there's always oh, gonna yeah. be mistakes I, when it comes to innovation so I mean, I get like a lot of people being like, oh, you should have been more careful with the autopilot, especially when there's a human behind that wheel. And I'm like, yeah, but again, Tesla, I mean, not only Tesla, but all of us humans don't like, you know, fully realize, sometimes don't realize the flaws of our own, like, you know, m- making until somebody else fixes it for us or points it out for us or it actually happens like. It's hard for us to be like, yeah, but what if this happened? Like, at the point that we make this, like, make an invention, we assume it's going to work the way we want it to. Right. But not always. So it's hard to fully blame uh, Tesla. Yeah. Again, I get, I feel for the people that, you know, been hurt by uh, the autopilots and, like, autopilots' flaws and all that. But again, like you should have known the risk at that point that, you know, it's new technology. It's risky in the beginning. Yeah. 
honestly, yeah, no, I wouldn't necessarily blame Tesla. If anybody, um, like, I do place partial blame on them because, yeah, I, you could make the Well, blame. of course, they made it. Yeah, yeah exactly. They should take some part of the blame, but not, like, they shouldn't be villainized or, like, attacked for this. Like, this is, like, again, they didn't think about this when they were making it. Right. If anything, in my opinion, personally, I think, um, like, the the auto regulator I, I don't know exactly what administration or you know commission that would be as part of the government but i feel like um the government especially because this is like this kind of technology is likely going to become more mainstream in the near future and i think yeah um like our our auto regulations like our vehicle regulations are clearly not designed for that and i think that honestly the government or you know, I I don't I guess it's National Transportation Highway Safety Agency, whatever. Uh, they should start like seriously considering it as a mainstream feature in vehicles, and mm -hmm. they should start uh, testing it more, like rigorously, I guess. Yeah. So I I put partial blame on the government as well for not doing that. I, I'm sure they tested it because. It, but they, they didn't really know because the, the, I'm sure there really wasn't a system like autopilot before. So they didn't mm -hmm. really know what to do with it, I'm sure. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. Like you can't fully blame them all the time. Like, you know, like it's hard. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 yeah, they definitely are going to have to like start thinking about it more seriously as a mainstream feature because I think it will yeah, be. definitely. Whether yeah. it's in Teslas or anything else. And, and the thing is, is like I don't like, <laughs> I don't like Tesla personally. It's just, it's just a personal thing. Yeah, you know this, yeah. But like, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I can't. I, I'm not gonna. I won't, like, just put blame on them just because I don't like them. Because that's that's not really fair. I have other reasons for legitimately not liking them. That's really not one of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, um. Yeah. I mean. Uh. To what I wanted to say it was like. Um, Tesla being, I'm pretty sure this like autopilot thing, they're one of the very first ones to ever do it anyway. So it's, right. it's hard to like, uh, there's always going to be problems or issues or side effects that come with like innovation. That's, that's not even a question. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people are like, so shocked. They're like, what? And they're like, super surprised by this. And I'm like, why are you surprised? There's always going to be a side effect or something with the innovation. Like, for example, uh, for example, the vaccine recently, right? The uh, Johnson & Johnson mm -hmm. vaccine, the one that you take, you take only one shot for. Apparently, people have getting blood clots for that. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. that's like vaccines for COVID is relatively new. And it's obviously going to have some side effects that we don't know 100%. We rushed vaccines. Um, obviously it's not the same as autopilot, but it's the same in the sense that all innovation have their risks. Like some don't show it right away, but they will show in hindsight. And then later on, for example, like cigarettes, like we thought that cigarettes were amazing for the human body. It was like healthy or whatever. And then later on, we thought how stupid of them, like obviously smoking is bad like hindsight is always gonna be like oh yeah that's obvious why didn't you think of this mm -hmm. you know it's yeah. hard to blame people for those things. yeah i mean honestly the uh the whole thing with the vaccine like that leads to a bigger thing about like like i i, I don't i i'm not an anti-vaxxer don't don't get me wrong i don't want to <laughs> place in that camp but like i feel like it's fair to be hesitant towards um some this, especially well medicine like new medicine new medications in general i mean like well of course you got to be like yeah i was iffy about the vaccine at first as well i was like right did we do, like did we rush the process or did we fully you know follow the uh the procedure and fully know for sure that's why not only like you but like a lot of doctors also feel that way where they're yeah. like have we have we really like studied this to the fullest extent of our abilities mm -hmm. obviously since you know vaccines are being rushed in and all that there are gonna be side effects like johnson and johnson's like a lot of people you know suffer from that and 
I think people should know when they walk into like the vaccines. Like I'm assuming that these these um like you know researchers haven't fully don't fully know like the long term effects of these vaccines. Like yeah, they don't know what might happen, and like we just we're taking a risk by taking it, and I think everyone should know that. But- yeah. Also, it, it, well, here here is the thing that I don't like. Um, and it actually doesn't have anything to do with the vaccine. Well, I guess it technically does, but it doesn't have anything to do with like the you know conspiracy theory, like danger of it. It's more the fact mm-hmm. that, and it says it on the CDC website that yeah. the like the it, it's only. Uh, let let me pull it up. It was basically saying, um, um, like that the vaccine was only usable it was like basically it was only effective for a certain amount of time uh let me i'm, I'm pulling up the cdc website right now uh oh god effectiveness yes this one um oh my god why can't i find it damn it say something while i'm looking <laughs> sure um uh i'll make a quick uh update video uh thing for us uh okay while you're searching yeah, so um, Tyler is actually um, started his commit, uh, his committed uh, episode two. He's forty percent done with editing. Um, he's finished with the actual recording of it, so that's that's exciting. Um, and for me, I we we recorded an update video last week, but Tyler forgot to post it. Oops. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, I'm planning on having my own series soon. Um, it was going to be on like like boring stuff like studying or whatever, but who's going to watch that, right? So I don't know. I'm still thinking of what I want to have. But other than that, I mean, we're pretty much just high school students are struggling with school. I don't know. Right. I'm dying, dude. All right. I found the thing. I found the thing. I found the thing. All right. So here we go. Nice. So the, the the thing I was talking about was uh, the the effective like the the protection effective like the effective protection of the vaccine. So how long is it effective for? Like after how much time uh, will you basically probably need to get another one? Uh, you know, as, oh for the vaccine, right? So well, for me, I I yeah, yeah go ahead then. Every, I know mine. It says that protection lasts for at least six months, possibly longer. Yeah, it's kind of like the flu shot, yeah. See, I, they're going to have to fix it. See, this is the problem with it. This this is the problem, in my opinion, with the mentality towards uh, like f- ending the pandemic. Is that, and th- this was something they did with small, well, actually, the, the opposite happened, like, with eradicating smallpox and it's the fact that they actually eradicated the virus itself because what they're doing here with, with a vaccine is protecting you from it it's not actually killing the virus itself and yeah. I, I think that's the problem is like I, i'm not saying a vaccine is a bad thing to focus on it, it's perfectly fine it's it's a good thing but you just don't like the fact that we have to get shots for it every year well, not not even that necessarily, but also we don't know how long exactly it lasts. It might be different in different people, but mm-hmm. um, the mentality should be the same thing we had towards smallpox, which is where that, we just kill it and just have, have it gone forever. Exactly. Well, I Overall. I guess, but I mean, if you think about it, right? Does does the the what's it fucking called? Um, does the health department really want that to kill it? Yeah, I would assume so. Don't you get like? Don't they get money from it though? Well, yeah, like, but okay, okay, okay. Money. In a moral society. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm dude. I'm talking about real world, man. Although, why mean, do you think? I mean, like again, I mean, also, if you think about it, the flu shot is also like a yearly thing. I, I know they haven't fully. They haven't fully killed that off. And I well, think, that's almost I think that's impossible, what, in my opinion. I mean, isn't well? I don't know too much about you know health and like what the virus is, but isn't the virus similar to the flu, anyways? Like the symptoms are, yeah, the symptoms itself are also really similar. I think it's a. I don't know. The whole thing about the flu is like that. It. 
I, I don't know exactly how it works because like flu season, I, I don't get exactly like what flu season like does the virus only come out during a certain time of the year you know what i mean like i don't i don't get exactly how it works uh yeah i, I don't know i'm not but i what um, i do know is that it mute like the flu mutates a resistance towards um the flu shot incredibly easily and that's why they keep making new ones every year and that's why sometimes they're not as effective is because they're using last year's uh, flu as the template for the vac for the, the the flu shot, and m- sometimes the next year the flu is like a completely different mutation, so it'll be uh, it, it won't be as effective. Yeah. In some cases, I don't know. I, I'm no I'm no health expert. I, I, this is very basic. Yeah, knowledge. yeah, we're we're <laughs> we're literally we don't know what we're talking. Yeah, don't don't take our advice honestly. Yeah, it's not it's not a good idea. But yeah, I I don't know. That's that's kind of my whole thing about the virus. Uh, yeah, we can move on again. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how we got here from self driving cars, but you know. Uh, we were talking about like innovation in general. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I forgot. Oh yes, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, our next uh, it's not really an article. It's it's, it's more of what I wanted. Yeah, it's, but you can talk I mean, about it. <laughs> it is current events, though. Yeah. So uh, it's something more closer to, you know, students of our age. Um, so AP exams are coming up. Anyone excited for it? Probably not. Uh, people need to go, like, so they have a choice, right, to either go to school or take the test online. And I know, Tyler, you and me are taking it online. Yes. Uh, but the issue that I'm I'm trying to bring up here is that you can't actually go back to the questions you have already you know answered or passed in the on the virtual test, which I feel like is an issue since this raises questions and issues with, um, you know, like obviously the pandemic is so, uh, there, there's a vaccine now that's being distributed, but it's not. I don't think it's a good idea to have students all go back into school and packed into like one room and take like this test for a long period of time and like college board is like kind of uh, like obviously they're not either they're trying to do this by using this tactic or they're not i don't know but uh by having this uh the option or taking away the option to go back and to relook at your problems like kind of encourages students to go back to school to take it in person and i feel like that's really irresponsible right now. It's like a either, even if there's a vaccine, like that's not a guarantee from you getting sick. Like you right, get exactly, sick, exactly. but you won't die. But like, still it's, why would you take the risk? Mm-hmm. So yeah, the issue is why is college board giving students that, you know, are, are virtually taking this test in a disadvantage? Obviously it's like some, some reason for like oh to stop cheating but there's definitely better ways to stop this to stop from cheating like these kids or like students that are taking it virtually either are really um concerned about the uh, about covid or they just you know want to stay home but most of it I, I feel like there's a reasonable um explanation to why kids stay home like for me even if i ha- get the vaccine i have asthma which is bad for the, uh, for any illness especially like the flu or the cold or you know covid uh-huh. so staying home for me makes sense but like the fact that i'm getting this disadvantage is kind of unfair yeah no i completely agree it's it's i, I don't really get why they did this honestly um I, I understand that like last year uh like the ap test had to be drastically changed really quickly and they were kind of freaking out. So they literally just gave us like an essay. But I think honestly, if they're going to, what, what they should probably do, and I know this is probably not going to actually sound good, but if they want to stop like cheating, then get rid of the multiple choice. Yeah. I mean, we talked about this before where it was like taking, I mean, keeping the multiple choice just incentivizes people to cheat. Yeah. Just have like the, just have like, la- I mean, last year, right? Like it, it, it had, which I think 
it's fine. Like a lot of people were like, "Oh, but uh, like you know, it's easier to cheat." Like shut. Like I, no, it was easier more. to cheat. It was just like less. <laughs> I don't yeah, think the I AP mean, test, like the AP test, takes like takes like four. It takes like several hours to do. Or, I guess it depends I on the like, test, but like when I yeah. did it, several hours, uh-huh. like the traditional one. Mm-hmm. And that was like that was just not fun. It was. I mean, I, I understand that tests aren't supposed to be fun, but like that was awful. It, that was an awful, awful experience. It really was. So I don't understand. Yeah. I, I, um. <laughs> I mean, they don't really care about what your, our experience of taking that test is. They just want you to take it. Well, I know. College board but- has. This- College board has this monopoly over standardized tests. Well, they do. Except, actually. you know, AC- that- ACT. Yeah, college board. Yeah, yeah is- they do. So the thing is, I think that's why they're so bold in just making, like, giving people, like, yeah, well, uh, you can't go back to the problems you just passed because, uh, you know, fuck you. They could keep um, making changes and, like, making the test. Again, I'm not shit, like, I'm not, I'm not attacking or, or, like, you know, saying, like, college board is terrible. I'm just saying, oh, like, I am. Like, th- th- I'm just saying, like, there's there's a, a better way that they can do it, like, than just making it so that people have a disadvantage, I feel. I mean, they, like, they, yeah. do, they do have a monopoly over standardized testing. Yeah. I, I think, and, and I think that, that th- that's a problem, because they make a ton of money off of, you know, like an AP test, at least, it's, it's like $95 a person. For one test, and yeah. a lot of time, you know, in in many cases, kids take more than one AP course. So that's a lot of money yeah. per kid per school. Like, there's a lot of people who are a lot of that students. Pay, yeah, exactly. That's a ton of money, and that's not even counting. You and, know, and and you you realize that that College Board is a nonprofit organization. Yeah, well, it's not. It, it's not. <laughs> the, I mean, I think what this. Yeah, like. Like why ninety five? Like why do you need so much money? Well, it's for, going to. What, what do you? It is. It's. I know it's registered as a nonprofit, but the money is being pocketed. I. I. I think that's actually a pretty well known thing. I don't know why. Yeah, but, okay. Yeah, yeah, but I'm. What I'm confused in, right? Yeah. Is like, if they were nonprofit, like what is their like like? They, obviously, they take it. But what is their excuse? Like, how are they gonna ex- like say, yeah, the uh, test that you know takes. That has like a couple pages and a couple like you know scantrons. Like, why is it ninety five bucks? Like that itself should not take ninety five bucks to take. Yeah, that's see, ridiculous. What I'm saying, what I'm thinking is probably their excuse would be like, oh well, we use the money to like fund the creation of the new test and to print it and uh, to hire people to grade the essays and. It's it's just not like when you do the math and you put it together, you would not in it, like overall, uh, the amount of materials and manpower it would take to make and grade an AP test would not equal ninety five dollars. It just wouldn't. You know how many people it takes to grade a test? Nobody. They literally use a scan. Well, they the, use the essays, robot. The, to- the essays. The essays. Oh yeah, I mean. That, but that actually, again. now that I remember, um, teachers read the essays uh, for free. It's like it's like it's like they get elected to do that, if I remember correctly. So they don't even pay them. Now that I'm thinking about it, it's it's just like a it's like jury duty. You have to do it. Yeah, see, that's an issue. Like, bro. Yeah, I don't know. It's College Board is a very questionable company. Yeah, it, um, is. it is basically. A I mean, again, I uh, it's a it's a well established company that, like, it's not the only company that uses its power. Uh, oh, to, like no, that no. abuses it. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, like, not. it's not special. It's just it's just more annoying for us because you know we we have to deal with it. I think also the fact that it's basically taking advantage of minors is kind of a problem. But you know, yeah, and and uh, like our public I mean, education. Not only that, they're abusing the school edu like the the education system. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. that's why I'm I'm happy I'm happy that a lot of colleges are stopping. But, like I took the subject tests. I did really well on it. Actually, you don't even but, need to take the SAT. Yeah, you don't need to. T- which is funny. You don't need- <laughs> well, it's 
You don't. Well, technically, you don't need to, but no, I, it, it sh- it's recommended to. That's why a lot of people take it. It's like I, it's like that un it's like that untold rule. Like you have to take the SATs. Well, not anymore. No, no. Like because of COVID. Oh, 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 oh. I was talking about. I was talking about like when we were back in our like junior year, where like you know, oh, COVID yeah. wasn't a. Th- yeah, I mean, yeah, it's uh, now it's more open. Um, I mean, that's also because of COVID. I don't know how they're gonna do it now. Like when See, they, we come back to school, but I know for sure that uh, standardized tests are being becoming less and less important, which is good. It's great. Yeah. Because then people can actually focus on the more important, valuable factors like GPA, which, you know, um, actually tells you, like, how well the student is throughout the four years they actually, you know, right. uh, studied as a student for four years yeah. rather than a, a test that takes three hours to do. That's not going to encompass all of that student, not even the GPA. Right? Like, it's impossible to gauge a student's value just from numbers and, you know, one, like, couple pages of, like, an essay. It's hard to. That's why it's always a struggle, but I know for sure that standardized test was a huge flaw in admissions. Yeah, and I, and no, it's it's 100% a step in the right direction. I think it was going to happen eventually, but COVID basically just pushed it out very quickly. And honestly, that's, 100% 100% for the best. Yeah, um, we're not saying that COVID is a good thing. We're just saying no, sometimes I, it, from bad things, good things can happen. Yeah, like for companies, okay, well, not all companies, but like a lot of companies like that, uh, like let's say they had a big office in a major city. They, yeah. they, they're realizing that they could save a ton of money from just having everybody work from home. Like that, that's... I, I mean, maybe not for the workers necessarily, but like for the company, that's a huge positive that came over. Okay, that came out of the pandemic, and yeah, maybe for some people that's that's good too. People like to work out of the comfort of their own home. Good for them. Some people like going into the office, but overall, it probably saves a lot of money, whether that be on gas or public transportation for the workers. So I mean, you know, there's. I mean, also they get to stay with their family. Sure. I mean, sometimes that can be a pain in the ass if, like, you have small kids. But, <laughs> that you know. is true. That is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's always um, up, there's always two sides of the story, or even three, or even more. But you know, um, yeah, we let's go on because you know we don't want to talk about AP exams. It gives me stress. No. Um, I got, are we moving on to video games or? Are we, uh... Yeah, our episode today is very short. Very short. Uh, Actually, I'm going to go get water. I'm going to go get water. So let's have a break. All right. Uh, Be right back. Will you be the one to witness the birth of the incredible Nintendo Entertainment System? The one to play with Rob, the extraordinary video robot, batteries not included. He helps you tackle even the toughest challenge. Will you be the first to raise the incredibly accurate Zapper and play games like Duck Hunt or action-packed Hogan's Alley and high-flying Kung Fu, each sold separately? Will you be the one to experience the Nintendo Entertainment System? Comes with Rob, Zapper, Control Deck, two controllers, Gyromite, and Duck Hunt. And uh, I believe we're back. Yeah, I hope you guys liked our, you know, ad. As always. It's, you know, YouTube doesn't give us ads or anything, so we have to give ourselves that. Yeah, don't forget to buy whatever it is we, uh... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Anyway, speaking of stuff, uh, video games. Yeah, we're... we're yeah, video games. <laughs> oh. Okay, um, so th- this is kind of funny. So do you remember Tetris 99? Yeah. Do you remember Super Mario 35? No. So it's like Tetris 99, but with Mario. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, introducing Pac-Man 99. Oh, yes. It's the new replacement for Super Mario 35 on uh, Nintendo Switch Online. Because that died... Be- you know, because uh, the, uh, Mario was purged at the end of this past month because of uh, uh, reasons. So, Do you know why? What? Do you know why it was purged? No, just because they wanted to, like, limited release everything. They did the same thing with, like, 
the Mario game and watch and Super Mario 3D All Star. We talked about like limited release yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that it's That's part cringe. of that. It's part of that. Uh, That's really cringe. Yeah, yeah, it really is actually. <laughs> okay, That's Tom. So, uh, yeah, Pac Pac Man ninety nine is the new replacement for Super Mario thirty five on Nintendo Switch Online. Is basically the same concept except with Pac Man. I, I'm not a hundred percent sure how it works because with Mario thirty five is basically playing through. I I think it was like playing through several like, it was playing the original Super Mario Bros. and you would play through levels with thirty five other people. Uh, and then you would essentially keep going until you die, and whoever was the one still alive at the end won. It was like a battle royale. This is basically the same mm -hmm. thing. It's the same thing they did with Tetris ninety nine. Uh, yeah. So apparently, this wait, wait, wait. Is Mario thirty five that that the normal Mar Super Mario, like the original first game, just yeah. played, and then yeah, yeah, then I know, yeah, I yeah. Know. So, um, this concept is being applied to Pac Man. And question, Dude, I'd be so good at that game. Is it free? Uh, on Nintendo Switch Online, yes. Oh, then I can get it. Yeah, I'm gonna play it. I'm so, so good at Pac-Man, bro. I don't know if it's out yet. I you think it is. You don't even understand. I'm too good. I'm so, really, dude, I've been addicted to Pac-Man. Like in our, in school years, when we when we didn't do anything in class, I was just like, "Yep, yeah, Pac-Man time." That was Tetris for me. I literally played Tetris every freaking day and then it was uh no no it was pretty much always tetris actually now that i'm thinking about it. but yeah uh is the concept of uh a retro battle royale game like are, is this concept of retro battle royale games a good idea in general do you think it could work um, with I mean, other see what i think games i yeah. think is weird is like they're putting this in like Nintendo Online, kind of giving it a reason to get, right? It's like, oh yeah, you can play games online with friends, but you can also do this. So they give, you know, multiple reasons uh for oh, yeah, buying yeah. Nintendo mm -hmm. Online. Yeah. Which I think see, there's always like I always bring this up because it makes sense. Like there's the business um perspective and then there's the customer's perspective, right? For me, as a customer, I actually don't mind because I do have online, so I can play this. Sure. But I mean, I'm assuming they're all they're gonna pull it down later, right? They're gonna. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I have no idea if they're actually. Gonna well, do that or not. yeah, I'm. I'm assuming from the pattern that we've seen, yeah, they're probably gonna make it like a limited edition and then drop it later. But, um, uh, like other than that, I guess like. Like business decision wise, yeah, it's a good idea, but it's also, you know, those it's like weird because like, if I was a businessman and I made Pac Man ninety nine, I would just make it in its own game. Like, why do you make it free on Nintendo? You know, Switch Online. Oh, it's it's definitely to try to drive more people to buy Nintendo. Well, yeah, online, but it. again, yeah, but I don't know, Pac Man. Like Super Mario 90, 35, Pac Man 99, and Tetris 99, I feel like could have been like a good game just by itself. Like it didn't need to be packaged for free. Yeah, I feel like if they sold like, them for like $10 or something. No, not only $10. Like, I think $10. Like $15, 15 <laughs> is good. Well, you have to keep in mind, like, when I mean, like, you can sell them separately, I mean, like, you can play those games online without buying Nintendo online. Oh, yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, like, on the eShop. For yeah, like $10. Dude, $15 makes more sense so business-wise. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, they program this, like, to be, you know, a battle royale, which is really popular with people. I know a lot of people actually play Super Mario 35. It's, uh -huh. like, quite popular with content creators, with you know, just gamers in general. So I, I can see them, like, if they were to, like, they could have just, you know, made them their own games. Like, Oh, yeah. No, I, I think that's, honestly, like, I, I don't like Nintendo Switch Online because it doesn't work and it's not worth, I know it's only $20 a year, but, like, oh my God, just, if you made it work, well, yeah, that's, fine. You don't like it, but I'm okay with it. Because, like, I get free games and I can play on a shitty See, system. Thing, yeah, the thing is, like, honestly, I don't care about the majority of, like, those NES and Super NES games because I can play them in other ways, whether that be, like, yeah, 
you know, with the original cartridge or on already bought like on the the old eShops or even the Wii Shop channel. And on it, okay, what, in my opinion, it I would consider getting Nintendo Switch Online if they gave us uh, Nintendo 64 games and maybe GameCube games because clearly they can run. We got Super Mario Sunshine to work. I know it's on an emulator, but you know what I mean. It could definitely happen, but they just don't want to. Yeah. Uh, that, like, because here's the deal. Like, Super NES and S- and uh, NES games, the, like, the whole fad of nostalgia for those is kind of done. Like, I-, I don't know about you, but, like, I'm kind of done with seeing 8-Bit Mario everywhere. It's, it's, yeah. it's, I've become very numb to it. It's not, like, cool anymore. So, <laughs> it's I, just, it's just, like, mad now. It's kind of like Mickey Mouse, right? Where yeah. it used to be, like, an icon where it's like, wow. But now it's just like, bruh. Yeah. You keep using it. It's, I mean, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with 8 bit Mario. I, I, I don't. I think those games are still very fun to play. But, like, mm-hmm. they're, they're shoving nostalgia down gamers' throats that most gamers at this point are not nostalgic for anymore because like the fad yeah, for that was like, 10 years ago i'd say but now exactly people... it's yeah now mm-hmm. you can finish finish <laughs> uh i wanted to say like um i don't it's like how do i say it? it's like almost as if people have kind of furthered their relationship away from companies like companies aren't even trying to understand their audience no. anymore <laughs> no 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 like, yeah. uh i want you to buy this and i want you to like it and like they just force it and it's just like there's like buy, buy, buy the game good guys but yeah, just, just do it just do it <laughs> like yeah they're like it, yeah it's 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 i mean again it's like it's not only them right it's like youtube also no, has yeah. that issue mm-hmm. yeah other area like other um companies have that issue as well so yeah I'm not surprised by it. Obviously, that doesn't mean it should be the norm. It should definitely should be changed. No, I what, yeah, honestly, can... in my opinion, if they wanted to capitalize on the current like nostalgia market for video games, at least Nintendo, mm-hmm. um, they should be putting out more. And whether they do it in like a collection of games that you have to pay for, or Nintendo Switch Online, I don't really care. But they really should consider putting out N64 and uh, GameCube games on the Switch because the the nostalgia craze for those games right now is pretty much at an all-time high. And that's basically because the people who grew up playing those games are now old enough to the point where they want to pick them up again. Yeah, and, that's and, true. Like, the price of a GameCube game is ridiculously high. Like, Pikmin 3 is still, like, $80. It's not... Or Pikmin 2, sorry, on GameCube... Is like eighty dollars. Sunshine is still like in the fifties. Luigi's Mansion is also in the fifties. Like those kind of games are still they're very popular and very pricey in the used market. And if Nintendo were to make them readily available again on a modern platform, maybe put them in widescreen, maybe upgrade some graphics, whatever. Like my God, they would make so much money. I don't know why they're not doing that yet. Yeah, I mean, again, they. They must be thinking of something or waiting, you know, whenever, you, well, you said like uh, reboots or, you know, moving it, just like porting it to a different area. There's always like a uh, worrying of like, is this too early or is this too late? Right? True. Um, yeah, I did so say that. So for us, <laughs> we, we demand it, right? But the companies themselves don't always listen or, or yeah. can't even, you know, they think they don't hear anything, right? So they, they're they like still waiting, like be like, maybe we should wait a little bit more, right? Mm-hmm. um that might be a thing right so uh, i think we, they, we can't yeah i mean if we were in the board like the board of uh you know the board uh in nintendo we definitely make changes like that but yeah we're I, not we're, we're just the customers we know the customers they know the business side of things we can't really do much about that yeah i, I think that nintendo really needs to and i understand that they're like a very closed company in terms of like what they actually do as a business um but they really need to open up a little bit or at least take consumer advice 
or listen mm-hmm. to consumers just a <laughs> yeah. bit because they they need to become a little bit more lenient with like community stuff because like mm-hmm. we had this issue this past summer with the Smash tournaments, but we had the issue with Nintendo copywriting like tons of their music on YouTube, and mm-hmm. it, it's like they and they continue to release re-release games that either people didn't really care about or they're doing it wrong. And yeah. I'm not saying wrong, like, as in my opinion. I mean, like, objectively from a business point of view, but they don't understand that. They they don't mm-hmm. they don't have a great grasp on their demographic, I think. Yeah. I mean, also, um, uh, I just wanted to add that Nintendo's at their, at like, their golden age, right, right now. In one of Since them, yeah. It's, it's a renaissance. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's like one of their renaissance where it's like, a lot of like these OG games that have been really famous when they were younger have been reworked and almost modernized. For example, Mario Odyssey was kind of supposed to be um, like a revamped version of the original 8-bit Mario in the sense like, oh, you can go to new worlds. There's different, you know, biomes, essentially. It was kind of like a remake. Good. I was going to say like more it's a remake of 64, if anything, but... Oh, yeah, true. Sorry. Yeah, 64 it was. Yeah, sorry. I completely forgot which one. But yeah, that was a remake for 64, which was a very a relatively real, like, not relative. It was a famous game. It was amazing. A lot of people love that game. Um, Breath of the Wild was a remake, pretty much, or a love letter to its original first game, The Legend of Zelda, the very first one. That one, um, or, yeah. So, pretty much, actually. Yeah, exactly. It was a love letter to it. It was a remake, almost. So, I get like when nintendo is like being like yeah t- like we don't need to care as much because it like essentially everyone is in love with um nintendo right now but what i'm worried about is the fact that n- them not caring for a newer audience and just veering it towards like being like yeah there's somebody that's gonna like this is not gonna work like in 20 years yeah well the, I, right I... like when we grow older who's the audience i like there's not a lot of people that hold va- as much value to these characters as we do. Yeah. Which is why, we, which is why we suck it up and be like uh, it's, Nintendo is shitty, but we'll buy it, right? Well, that's the problem. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. That the newer generations are more into like epic games with like their oh my god, we can play like Fortnite or some you know yeah game like so it's it's. We can't like Nintendo needs to start giving people what they want, mm. and especially for you know the newer audience now, then they need to veer to the younger generations, which they are doing with Pokemon. But again, Pokemon is not, it. yeah. I mean, they're they're trying things, I see they're, tr- they're trying, yeah, things. but they're trying it by just lowering the difficulty curve. But that's not how that that's not how you should do it. Well, I mean, they're trying. Like when we were younger, we yeah. played games that were so hard that we couldn't finish it. But later on, when we grew older, it was doable. So yeah. we liked those games more. Like when I was younger, I couldn't play Diamond, I was, Pokemon Diamond. I was like, "Bro, this is hard." So like when I grew older, I fell in love with Diamond and Pearl, and you know that generation more because I played it when I was younger. I struggled on it, but now I can play it properly. Yeah, yeah. No, like, I, I... and even not even us. Like when. I mean, obviously, sorry, I'm cutting. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. But like when I know my dad, when he was like, he played Street Fighters, he was like, yeah, like when he played, the games were a lot harder when he was younger. Uh And then now, you know, now it's so much easier. It's so much easier than it used to be. There's like lack of skill now. It's almost just like you button mash and just and then just play brain dead. Mm hmm. Which is fine. There's specific games for those, but like, don't implement it into like games like Pokemon, where it's supposed to be like a strategy based game. Yeah. No, I I agree. I and I get like Nintendo is is trying some new things. Like the the like Splatoon was a big hit. Uh, mm-hmm. Arms yeah, was for not. Younger kids. Arms was not, but uh, they tried. Animal Crossing. Yeah, I feel like it, I'm making. Yeah, huh? go ahead, sorry. Animal Crossing no. like became pretty popular again. I like the 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 uh 3DS sold well, but and New Relief was a really good game, but like I, it, it didn't get the recognition it probably deserved. 
like freaking New Horizons literally exploded just because of the Rona, and and like they did try some other stuff like Labo and Ring Fit Adventure, which is actually more geared towards actual exercise, but that's not really the point. Like, so yeah. they they are like innovating. They they are trying new things. They're not just relying necessarily on old characters. But like uh, my my big question actually for Nintendo is. Are, are they going to do, like, I know everyone's talking about, like, a Switch Pro. Like, oh, when's the Switch Pro going to come out and all this stuff? Which Nintendo has never even said that they're going to do that. But a Switch Pro? What? Yeah, it, like, you know, upgraded hardware so it could run better games. Uh, the games will look better. Maybe the, like, the screen will be a higher resolution. I guess. Right. Like, people really know. want, like... people really I mean, want that, to be honest. I, I guess. I don't know, but then the problem with that would be then for like people that already have the Switch, it would be like, we have to buy it again. Well, yeah, but people are willing to do that to like be I'm able not, to play. I'm just like, I already paid three years ago $500. I'm not about to replace it. Was, it, again. it was 300 It was 300 I think that. No, no, I know. No, I mean, a lot of people, because um, like the, the big thing about the Switch, at least originally when it launched the the big thing was that it could uh it was Transport. portable yeah exactly yeah. but now that that uh magic at least nobody me, does it yeah it, that's very much worn off on people either you play it as a handheld or you play it in a tv as a regular console i don't see a well, lot of i people... do i do kind of both when i go on vacation i just bring the portable yeah but yeah i get what a lot of people do yeah yeah, yeah I'll, i play I it on the tv most of the time I end up playing it just handheld most of the time, but I, I don't know. That's just me. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have a lot of Cube, so yeah, like a GameCube controller, so I don't use the Joy-Con, so it's hard. Yeah, no, the only reason I do that because I have a ton of stuff plugged in. I have like a lot of consoles, and <laughs> plugging like the Switch dock, I have to like unplug my Wii U and put the HDMI, and I'm like, <laughs> ah, it's a pain in the ass. I don't really want to do that. I don't care enough. Yeah. Because, like, the that TV that I have stuff plugged into is not, like, amazing anyway. It's not going to look, yeah. like, significantly better. I mean, again, a lot of people forget that the Switch is amazing. Like, think about it. Like, a portable console, essentially. That on itself should be, you know, commended for. And a lot of people forget because, you know, they have it now. That, like, yeah, we want better graphics. Like, well, dude, I think... this is, like of its kind like chillax but we'll to get be fair our- it's been five years uh four years sorry it's been four years yeah it has not been five years it's been four years yeah, it's been four years i think it's i mean i think it's I ready think- i'm not even saying no I, i'm not saying like discontinue the original switch or like that no, no, this no, would no, be I a get new console saying, but think of they think, need it like the about- xbox does the same thing ps4 or playstation does the same thing they but they've they, when did they release Switch Lite though? Like two years ago, I think, or a year ago? Two years? I think it was two years. Me, this is a good question. Twenty nineteen. So it's two years ago. Years. Two years. Yeah. Sorry. I I, I think I don't know. I like I think something equivalent to. I think they're milking no because I know they're milking Switch Lite right now because I know they're making different colors now and they're oh, like I know. you can buy the purple one and shit like they're they're doing kind of. They're pulling like they're a Game Boy focus- color. <laughs> yeah, they're focusing a lot on the uh, Switch Lite right now. But if they get the Switch Pro, I mean, I'll force them to buy it. Unfortunately, you don't have to buy it. Like it. No, I but think what uh, it's uh, for... assume, no, but graphics wise, see, like the Nintendo Switch works. It's like weird because it it also has issues with the Joy Con. So like, oh, if they whoa. fix that on this, yeah, if they s- fix that on the Switch Pro. Dude, I mean, there's no other choice but to buy it. Yeah, but no, I hate God, the fact that the Joy-Con that. does not work. Why does the Joy-Con not work? Because, Explain to me. Well, it's it's not that it doesn't work. It's that they don't care enough to fix the problem with it. It's well, it, it's gonna... actually it's not even that. It's that there's no nothing is forcing them to fix the problem. The Switch is still selling incredibly well. Um, like they are technically offering to fix them for free, so mm-hmm. it's like. You know what I mean? It's it's kind of yeah. they don't have to I've do been anything. Buying them, dude. I'm already on my third set of Joy Cons. Are you kidding? See, exactly. Like you'll keep buying them, uh, anyway. Even if you complain, you're gonna keep doing it, and they know that. 
and that, that's the number one problem with Nintendo right now is that like they have this mentality that we'll just literally buy anything that says Nintendo on it, and the problem is that it's completely true. Uh, I'm stopping that for the most part, mostly because I'm getting more into retro games when it comes to consoles. Unless it's like a really big release, like you know, Breath of the Wild two or dude, uh, Breath of the Wild you know, two whatever. is so hype, dude! I can't wait. You got yeah, you got that. Um, there's like the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes. Like yeah, I'm gonna get them. I don't care if the art style's bad. I don't even hate it that much. Uh, dude, it looks like PNG is just scrolling around. It makes me want to throw. <laughs> it doesn't look that bad, really. But like nah, that, dude, it looks. So weird. They look like jelly. I feel like they're definitely gonna have to fix that. I don't want to get back because we had an argument about, or we had not no. Argument, okay, we had so we talked about, about this in like our first episode, and I want to retract for the audience that are listening that I do think that the Diamond and Pro remakes graphics do look terrible. I have to agree. It looked so bad. I like looked back at it like after, and I told this to Tyler and everyone else after the recording how terrible it was. But yeah, it looks so weird. It looks because there's like in during the platinum and diamond, like you know, when it was like the original ones, they were hard lines, so they were like covered with like thick bl- uh, black lines, so you can see in like an outline. But there's no outline on these characters, they look well, like I mean, smooth jelly characters. Well, they I mean, look the, disgusting. the problem is the problem is that the reason, like, uh, the original Pokemon games or the original Diamond and Pearl. We're in that art style was because of the limitations of the DS. It had nothing well, yeah, to do but with I the stylistic choice. No, no, no. I know it. It worked there. Like that's that's why it worked there is because of the limitations of the, of the console. It was essentially. I like mean, a I guess they game. have like. Yeah, I guess they have more detail. I mean, yeah, they I do. don't mind. Well, like the but new like, games do, okay. but like it doesn't translate well to being a fully three D game. Which it technically yeah, is. Yeah, I don't like how they look. Like, I, I, I'm I, okay with their, like, you know, looking from their back of their heads. Like, they look fine. I just don't like their weird fucking giant hands and giant eyeballs. Like, yeah, that doesn't work. It's a work. chibi. It's a, exactly. So, like, I get... It's a chibi um, style, which they do use in, um, Diamond, like, the original Diamond and Pearl. Yeah, it's but just, that's out of they, limitations of the hardware. That has nothing to do with stylistic choices. I don't know. Their fingers look weird. No, no. I mean in they, the original games. And I, I, oh, I'm. Oh, the original. Yeah, games, that's the limitation stylistic. on their part. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I mean, to be hundred percent honest with you, I rather have them look like this than the ones they look now. Because like the three D long lanky people running around <laughs> as Pokemon trainers seem really off to me. I'm. I'm like. I know that a lot of people like it with 3D and like, you know, they have more details and they can run, do whatever. But I don't like that. It looks off to me. It looks really, really weird. Because I've played the games where, you know, it's it's more limited, where it's like, it's a chibi character with giant heads and they just walk on 2D. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean compared I'm, to... The, yeah, yeah, go ahead, sir. I was going to say, honestly, I, I in my opinion, like... The Pokemon art style peaked mm-hmm. in Gen 5, which was the last like 2D uh, sprite based game. Yeah, which series. one was that? That was black and white, like just that generation. Yeah, yeah I actually it was okay with black and white. I actually I'm, not even, the game. I, I'm not even talking about it like as a game, I'm talking about it just based on the actual engine that they used it in. Mm-hmm. Because like that's when you had fully 3D or not 3D, fully animated uh sprites for the pokemon like yeah they that were was really the peak. good with that that was the peak in my opinion and then like yeah yeah because yeah, it was yeah. cool that they moved a little bit but they were also sprites which was also my, like because it was like that good transitional period uh-huh. where it's like like they had enough engine to animate these things but they also didn't make it 3d so it was weird looking so i was really happy with that i actually um enjoyed that the most out of black and uh black and white is like oh they move that's pretty cool like and that and you know they kept a lot of the original artwork anyways yeah which I, I liked a lot i mean that so. that was yeah no that was the peak in my opinion um I, I i honestly think if they just stuck with that i or they could do like they could keep like you know increasing the uh like actual resolution and making it look like better 
but I, I don't know if you've ever heard of a game called Octopath Traveler. Uh, but if you no, look it up, about this on Target, yeah, Target, yeah, yeah. I um, like, do you know what the game actually looks like? Like the artwork? No, I'm looking at it. Right look now. it up. Like that's what I want. Oh, um, it's like an RPG. Yeah, like a, a sprite version of yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's like it's like shade. There's like shade and you yeah, know like yeah. lighting. And, but it's still like two D. Mm-hmm. That's like that. Just do that. Like, my God, just do that. That's all you need. Yeah, dude. I yeah, just make. Make everything look really nice. Just keep it sprite based because I like it when it's sprite. When there's sp- like a sprite, like, ah, oh, dude, they. I hate. I hate the new games, dude. I don't know how much I have to express this, but the new Pokemon games are terrible. Yeah. No. Like the 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 series peaked in Gen five. I was mm-hmm. okay with the uh, uh the Gen three remakes on the three DS. Uh. Mm-hmm. For the most part, I didn't like they didn't have the battle resort, but you know whatever. Uh, yeah, that, that that was the only game that I was like, yeah, that's this is still an okay game as far as the 3D games are concerned. Like I really didn't like Sun and Moon. I really didn't like that. Uh, I haven't played <laughs> Sword and Shield. I don't want to because everyone says it's terrible, and I don't want to just waste money. Uh, and X and Y was just bad, but it, at least it had an excuse because it was the first like transitional game into the uh 3d that was the first one on the 3ds so mm-hmm. it, it gets a pass <laughs> but like it's oh my like, god uh, yeah I, I we've had this discussion before i don't want to just repeat but like jesus christ get, get it together guys please yeah really um yeah um uh that let's <laughs> we somehow got from pac-man 99 to pokemon again well it it, yeah, it just it, it ends up becoming a rant about like nintendo's business practices that's essentially yeah. what ends up happening we need to have a se- i'm gonna make a series on that J- just on like rants on gaming on how terrible they are but anyways let's let, let's go to the next section um, okay with, so you, you know. this is about everybody's other favorite video game uh fortnite so oh yeah it's, it's, well it's not necessarily about fortnite it's about Epic Games, because Epic Games is now worth nearly $30 billion. And that's billion yeah. with a B. Um, oh, yeah. So this this is clearly because of Fortnite. Now, I understand... Not they, only Fortnite. I mean, they but, have their own app store now. No, I was going to say, like, yes, I, they have the Epic Games store, but they basically give away all those games for free. That's the only re- reason that people use it. Um, so you have that. And then you have, yeah, they made like the original Gears of War games on the Xbox 360, which were very good. They're very, very good games. Wait, wait, wait what? At, you know Gears of War? Uh huh. They made the original three games. I think it was the first three they made. Wait, so Epic Games made Gears of War? Yeah, they created the series. No way. That's pretty cool. I, I forget what else they've made. It's probably like. Bro. Gears of War kind of looks cool. Why did they? Oh well, God, they they like so they bad. Epic Games themselves. They said were like the series, the story itself was complete in uh, Gears of War three. I think that's what they said. And they're like, yeah, no, we're we're done with the series uh, because we finished the story that we wanted to tell. And then okay. Xbox is like, no, I want to keep making games. So they kept making games. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so um, Epic Games stuff. Oh yeah, Epic Games owns like Fall Guys. I forgot about that. Remember that game? <laughs> Fall Guys? They own Fall Guys? Yeah, they they bought uh, the company that owns. Oh Fall no! Guys. <laughs> but yeah, they Fall owned... Guys has died so yeah, hard. Yeah, one hundred percent did die very quickly, which is sad. But you know, whatever. It was better than mm-hmm. Among Us. Changed my mind. Uh. Bro, I like Among Us. I don't know. It's it's fine. It's it's not really nah, a video. Fall game. Guys cr- makes me cringe. Um. Anyway, yeah. I mean, Epic Games. Th- it's because of Fortnite. Let's let's be totally honest here. Well, yeah, that's they, true. V Bucks, dumb kids. Like Epic Games was a reputable studio. Like they made Gears of War, and everyone likes Gears. Or a lot of people like Gears of War. Like that's a good series. Mm-hmm. Those are actually good games. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't call Fortnite. They made. Yeah, and I would not call Fortnite an actually good game, but it has made a lot of money. Um, 
so really the question now is how long is Fortnite going to last for in my in in your opinion just like based off how long it's been how long it's because been, it's been a while like Fortnite is, huh i don't know um to be honest it, i feel like it can go on for a long time like but do you think another game will take its place because like sometimes like we thought that was going to happen with battle royale games we're like oh yeah Dude, you know. i thought that i thought that fortnite was going to die in the first week it came out all right i, I don't know <laughs> I, I you know i gave it like a year and then it kind of did like everybody stopped talking about it nobody's Okay, maybe some people are still streaming. No, it, dude, like, kids in our school are still playing that game, and I don't know why. Yeah, I don't get that. Uh, I I understand like like they're having like actual concerts in Fortnite and like all all this crap. Like they're getting celebrities to be in it. I'm pretty sure they have like yeah, I'm pretty sure J J Abrams is, having... is in it. There's a J J. Not only J. I swear to God, dude, they put up. A... They put a lot of people into Fortnite. Like, it's Thanos. It's like it's becoming like a like a a cultural thing, which is incredibly scary to me. <laughs> I don't want Fortnite to be synonymous with America. Please stop. Oh, it already is. It is. <sighs> I, I, what I'm waiting for is the day that something beats it. Uh, I think what's uh, honestly from what it seems like, like with how much of a craze Fortnite continues to be in terms of making money and like active player base not necessarily publicity because that's kind of died no one's really talking about fortnite anymore uh yeah. it, it's probably going to be like minecraft and i'm not saying like that it's going to be the same game as minecraft but i'm saying like it's going to have a legacy yeah or it's never really going to die like minecraft is still being supported by mojang 10 years later uh, well okay Microsoft. but minecraft see minecraft is like this thing where it's like it doesn't so there's no quote-unquote way of dying off on like because it has a cult uh le- like you know it has a it's like a cult uh following, following right yeah sorry um obviously minecraft gets a lot of public um attention you know because it's still popular of course but there was a time where it, you know, died out, and then only a very few of the cult fall fo- like people played it, like cult uh-huh. followings. So, well, so yeah, I think, everybody grew up. Uh, the people yeah, who exactly. And the then kids grew up. Yeah, I mean, we also played, and you know, we're well, now. eighteen. Uh, yeah. There, there was a I period where I, I like... yeah, mm-hmm. go there, ahead. There, there was a period where I didn't play Minecraft for probably like three years. I think two or three years. Yeah, same here. It's like I didn't. I didn't play because I thought it was for kids. Uh, I mean, I play it now because, dude, it's just fun building, man. It's mm-hmm. fun building, killing things. It's it's a good it's a good game in general. It's a good survival game. It's fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, Fortnite to me, I feel like is gonna be. I mean, if you say wh- what you say is right, it's like Fortnite is like the Minecraft for their the next generation. Exactly. Like, yeah, that's what I mean. Kids. Basically, it's gonna keep, yeah, it's gonna survive. Three, Which I it's hard really ships. sad about because Fortnite has nothing special about it. It stole literally like the game mechanics or like the idea of a battle royale has been around since like the dawn of time. And people like think Fortnite's the one who made it. They're like, oh my god, like they're the first ones to make like you know, like uh, a battle royale game, which is not true. It's funny. Pub- it's it's not even the first battle royale to blow up. PUBG blew up way before. PUBG Fortnite. blew up. Yeah, before that, and then PUBG is not even the original. There's like no, there's H one Z one. There's uh, exactly. There's like I forget what. There's like Arma mods. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, no way. That's that's what PUBG is. PUBG started as like an Arma mod, I think. Or I I forget exactly. But like, well, yeah, yeah, I don't remember, but I know that definitely. It's been a while since there's been the first. You know. Yeah. And now everyone's putting Battle Royale in their game. And like also like uh the COD Battle Royale is pretty popular yeah. as far as I know. I've only played it once. It was I haven't fine. <laughs> uh, We're gonna go on a quick intermission. Okay. Me and you and you and me, no matter how they toss the dice, it had to be the only one for me is you. Something's gone wrong in the happy-go-lucky world of Nintendo. 
Introducing Super Smash Brothers, where all your favorite characters go toe-to-toe -to -toe in one four-player star-studded slam fest. Only on Nintendo 64. And uh, we're back. I Yeah. Yeah, we had to cut some stuff uh, for reasons. I Which I didn't even hear, but, you know, I'll take I mean, the it. people could have heard it, so we want to cut that out. But, yeah. Anyway, yeah, Fortnite. Um, yeah, I, it's it's. I, I think it's gonna. I really hope this doesn't happen. I hope I'm wrong, honestly. But like, I can see it being the Minecraft of the next generation. Yeah, I can. I mean, I I've always hoped it wouldn't be, but I can tell. I can see uh, what you mean by that. And like, the thing yeah. is, it's gonna it's gonna survive differently mm -hmm. than Minecraft. It's not gonna survive based on the community. It's gonna survive because Epic Games is gonna keep making money. And uh, they're gonna keep like getting celebrities, and it's become it's gonna become a bigger and bigger like cultural thing. Where like you can yeah, get celebrities gonna... and music stars and I actors. I think I think what happened for Minecraft was the community made it so that it became part of the culture, right? Mm -hmm. They the community themselves were like, "Oh, dude, this game is revolutionary! It's such a good game!" And that's how Minecraft became part of culture, like in in the gaming culture. Yeah. But for Fortnite. It's almost like Epic Games is like shoving money and pouring money into this game so that it can forcibly be part of that culture. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I, and I think it's a it's very unhealthy than... and very not epic uh, way to um, kind of popularize your game, right? It's, yeah. it's like a cheap way of doing it. It's, it's not scary, like based on your... It's working. Yeah, exactly. That's the issue, god damn it. They need to, like, I mean, I can't tell them to stop because they won't stop. But, yeah, I mean, Epic Games themselves is, like, this malicious company that just, they know how to make their, their games, like, you know, geared towards idiots. Is that so. a Gears of War pun? Dude, I've made puns, like, <laughs> twice already. I said I know, that I Epic, said Epic. I, I know, I didn't want to say yeah, that. Yeah, it was so not was very crazy. epic. Yeah, exactly. But you, you know what I'm saying. Um, it's not, I don't know, like, uh, and, and whoever's playing Minecraft, I mean, eh, not Minecraft, who's playing Fortnite and think you're smart by playing Fortnite or you think you're cool, you're not, and I hate you. Yeah. It's not a good yeah. game. It's just not a good game, honestly. Um, it's not a good game. I hate the, I hate the characters that are in it. They look ridiculous and I hate the, I hate that blonde haired white guy that's like supposed to be like the leader or like the face of um fortnite i hate him too i hate him the most yeah it's him just, and the banana guy i just don't it's just like legitimately like from a technical point of view it's not a good game the community is not necessarily like great uh no the community is toxic full yeah. of toxic little five-year-olds that scream at each other yeah it's it's not a fun experience like every time i've played that game and i've played it a couple times uh i've made videos about it even but like i just realized what fortnite is fortnite is a baby version of call of duty well no it's a baby version of PUBG, really or well okay but what i mean by like, I'm talking about community wise like cod has oh. Toxic, toxic oh yeah 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 as well well it did yeah, 10 man. years ago Honestly, like well, that yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like at their peaks, um, COD was one of the toxic ones. Fortnite is actually quite toxic, um, uh, for its peak as of right yeah, now. It was, it's a very um, sweaty I know, game. Yeah, League I know is a very toxic. Dude, yeah. League is so toxic. It's always been toxic. That's never gonna stop is being that toxic. CS:GO is toxic. Any, any, like honestly. Like multi uh, MMO games, just massively mm -hmm. multiplayer online games are incredibly toxic just because, you know, people are inherently, they're not inherently competitive. bad, but like they, they, they're competitive. They're competitively, they're competitive and you're going to get a bad egg. It's just kind of guaranteed because a lot of people yeah, play those Yeah, the more types, popular your game gets, you're going to get some guy that's crazy. Yeah. Or get butt hurt. Yeah, which I get. I'm I, I can be toxic as well, um. So I get it. But yeah, I, try, I mean, I try not to be. I used to yeah, be. I, 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 to. I, I, I used to be. There's like people really that cringe. know. No, that there's a lot of people that know they're toxic, but they don't want to change. 
that those are the it, those are the people that you know gotta be stopped yeah 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 I, um, I, I don't know if you have, you have anything else to add about Fortnite, but <laughs> Fortnite <laughs> is bad. Yeah, Fortnite is bad. <laughs> I'm glad play we played Minecraft didn't. instead. It's funny we didn't leave the topic of Fortnite throughout the entire conversation, uh, starting with. Well, Fortnite. it's because it's a very annoying game. It is a very annoying game. Watch my Minecraft. Watch watch the Minecraft after school videos about Fortnite. It's literally just me make just us making fun of Fortnite. Uh, oh yeah, you should also upload episode three for Minecraft gaming. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, you that, always that'll, forget about it. That'll happen too. Yeah, th- that's my poster child. It'll just sit in my freaking D drive forever and and never <laughs> be revealed. It's yeah, not even like it's record. bad. It's just it's just, it's just you forgot. <laughs> I'll be like our meme. It's just like, yeah, we'll all, we'll put up episode three. And just and never keep, do it. Yeah, they'll never be finished. There will forever only be two. Yeah, episodes. but yeah, I wanted to tell. I wanted because we we t- talked about it in the um in the update video, but you never you never <laughs> uploaded it. So I'll I'll say it to the audience. Okay. Um. Uh. Yeah. So, oh, frick, I forget what I was gonna say. Um, so yeah, uh, episode three was supposed to come out for Minecraft. Um, we, I don't know what's going to happen to it. I, I, I honestly think Tyler just lost the footage. No, it, it, I swear I still have it. <laughs> I don't really but yeah, um, Uh, yeah, so, so, uh, I wanted to talk about the gaming channel actually, because, you know, uh, yeah, so, um, the gaming channel is going to move on uh, from Minecraft because uh, it's kind of boring. Yeah. I don't know. It, there's a, It's like a slow build, and I, I feel like um, we should play on our own. We're not commentating. Yeah, this is a problem, and I, I've done this before because uh, I've mm-hmm. tried doing videos on games that are like a slow burn. Yeah. Like, yeah. you need to be able to have stuff. You need to be prepared to like have things to talk about if you're going to play a game for like 30 minutes or something and it's like or there's something to rant about yeah we have to have like a topic to talk about but i mean not only that i feel like um i mean this is always like it's a learning experience because i've never done like a gaming content or anything before so Mm -hmm. there's always that but yeah um so we're actually gonna move on from minecraft series because it's it's so we're gonna i think put it me on and, hold <laughs> yeah me and tyler might play it on our own time kind of get up to pace where it'll be interesting um but that's always gonna be we're gonna put it on the side for now uh we're gonna actually do more uh one player focus games and it's kind of like game grumps where one guy plays it and one guy commentates uh and yeah um i don't know uh what game we're playing next but me and tyler have been talking about mario uh yes. just in general like the og games like mario so yeah, we might be playing that so stay tuned for our gaming channel um, and thank you for watching our episode subscribe and like this video um yeah see you guys next video or next episode see you guys then